Hey. So I'm going to teach you how to find the greatest common factor of two numbers. And what we're going to use is something called the Russo method. It's probably called something else, but, you know, this is the way I do it. And you can do it like this, too. And the only thing that you got to know how to do is how to build a factor tree. And if you don't know how to do that, it's okay. I'm going to show you here right now. So, how to make a factor tree. All right, so consider the number 12. If we want to build a factor tree, the reason it's called a factor tree is because it's, it's like you're going to start with the number and it's going to branch into like different little branches. Uh, you're going to see that here. Maybe it looks more like a root system. I don't know. But you're going to start with the number 12. And I know that 12 is an even number. So I know that I can rewrite 12 as the product of 2 times 6. Right, so these two numbers right here, when you multiply them together, they have to give you this number up here that they're both coming from. Okay, so I'm going to focus on the big one first. 6 here is also even, and I know that I can rewrite 6 as 2 times 3. All right, this is a complete factor tree for 12. You might say to yourself, well, why can't we go further? Well, why isn't it that we can't, you know, go from 2 and split that up into 1 times 2? And why can't we split 3 up into 1 times 3? And let's put this 2 up into 1 times 2. Um, typically, you're going to stop your factor tree before you get to the point where the only way to break the number up is by multiplying it by 1. You don't have to go that far. So that's why I did it in red, because I needed to know I have to erase it. So let me show you something cool. You might have heard of these special types of numbers out there. They're called prime numbers. Um, Right before you get to 1 times 2, this number right here, this is a prime number. Okay? And when you build your factor trees, you get to stop whenever you get to a prime number. So we got a prime number here, we got a prime number here, and we got a prime number here. Um, any number that can be split up into two prime numbers is called a composite number. And we're going to go ahead and put X's through our composite numbers. We're not, we're not interested in the composite numbers, only these ones down here. You can think of it like holding your hand down like this. And these right here are your prime numbers and your fingernails. And then the spots up here uh, in between the webbing where it splits, that's called the node. Right, so um, you don't have to know these guys, just these guys right here. All right, so that's a complete factor tree. For 12, let's go ahead and build a factor tree for 60. Um, I picked 60 because it's a bigger number. Um, and I don't know if you know this or not, I think it was the Aztecs or the Mayas. It's the one that have the long count calendar that predicts the end of the world or whatever. You know, that didn't happen in 2012. Um, they had a counting system. You know how like we have a counting system that's based off of 10, right? Because we got 10 fingers, right? As you can count. Anyway, so the Mayas, I believe it was, yeah, Mayas. Um, they had a counting system that was based off of 60. So that's why they, I, I mean, I like 60 a lot. That's a little bit of math history. But anyway, so how do you break it apart? Well, let's do the same thing we did over here. I recognize that 60 is, well, that's an even number. So I can rewrite that as 2 times 30, right? Because 2 times 30 gives me 60. Well, I don't have to go any further here because we know that 2 is our prime number. 30 can be split up. It's also even as 2 times 15, right? 15 is not an even number, so you can't split it up into 2 times anything, but it does end with a 5. What does that mean? Well, if it ends with a 5, that means it must be a multiple of 5, which means that you can divide 15 by 5. If you divide 15 by 5, you'll end up getting 3, right? Because 3 times 5 is 15. 
All right, so as it turns out, this number two, this number two, this number three, and this number five are all the prime numbers. They're all the prime numbers that are factors of 60. And we don't need to know about the 30, and we don't need to know about the 15. Okay, so that's how to make a factor tree. So that's the completed factor tree for this one right here. And this is the completed factor tree for this one right here. So the skill of finding the greatest common factor of two numbers is reliant on your ability to make a factor tree for two numbers. Once you make the factor trees for the two numbers, you can start comparing the prime numbers that they have in common. So let's go ahead and take a look at two smaller numbers, 10 and 12, and we're going to build factor trees for these. So I have 10 here and I have 12 here, and I'm gonna build factor trees for them. So I know that 10 is even, that's gonna be two times five, and 12 is even, and this is gonna be two times six. Okay, so now I have two completed factor trees. Oh, wait, no, wait, no, you're probably saying to me, ah, oh, that factor tree for, six, for 12 is not done. That six can be broken apart, and you're right. The six is two times three. Yeah, now it's complete, right? I should know this. This was one of the problems, or this was the other problem for, on the previous page. <laughs> All right, so now that we have two completed factor trees, uh, we're, we're gonna, this is how I like to do it. Instead of writing 10 and 12, I'm gonna write two times five, right? Because two times five is 10. And instead of writing 12, I'm gonna write two times two times three, right? Because two times two, that's gonna give me four. And four times three, that's gonna give me 12. So I'm just rewriting the two numbers we started with as the product of their prime numbers. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see, is there anything that they have in common? Well, I see a two here and a two here. So I'm gonna circle this two and I'm gonna circle this two. Now, are there any other things that they have in common? Well. Over here we have a five, and over here we have a, no fives. And over here we have a two, and over here there's no more twos I can pair it with. And over here there's a three, but there's no threes over here. So the greatest common factor of 10 and 12 is this number two. So what you would do is you would write, whoops, my bad. You would write the GCF of 10, and 12 is 2. Okay, let's do another example. What about the GCF, the greatest common factor of 15 and 25? Okay, well, let's break the word down GCF for a second here. Well, GCF is an acronym and it stands for greatest common factor, but what you may not know is that a synonym for factor is divisor, right? It's a thing that divides. So can you think of a number that can divide 15 and 25 and give whole number answers? Like what number divides 15 and 25? I'll let you think about that for a second. Okay, so I hope that you have a number guess in your head. And what we're going to do is we're going to break 15 and 25 down into their respective factor trees. So 15 and 25, they both end with fives, which means that we can write them as five times something. What do you have to multiply five by 
to get 15. That's right, 3. And we saw in the previous problem that 5 is a prime number and so is 3. So let's take 25. Again, you can write that as 5 times something. This one was the one that I liked when I was a kid because it was 5 times itself, right? 5 times 5 gives me 25. So now we have two completed factor trees and we're going to compare the numbers in the factor trees, right? What number do they have in common? Right, we have 5 and 3, so that's 5 times 3. And over here we have 5 times 5, right? We can see that there's a 5 here that can pair with a 5 that's over here. There's no 3's over here, and there's no 5's over here, so we're kind of done. That means that the GCF of 15 and 25 is 5. All right, got a couple more for you. What about the GCF of 11 and 33? All right, so we can break them down into their factor trees. But what do you know it? 11 happens to be a prime number. Think about it. You can't write 11 as anything other than 1 times 11, right? Because, right, 2 you know what I'm saying? You can't divide it by 2. 11 happens to be a prime number. So you don't have to build a factor tree. There's no tree for this one. All right, there's no tree for it. So we just leave it alone. What about 33? Well, 33 is actually the product of 3 and 11. All right, so now we have our two completed factor trees. Right, what number do they share in common? Well, we have 11 here, and over here we have 3 times 11. And the only thing that they have in common is this 11. Right, so that means that the GCF of 11 and 33 is 11. So this is an interesting example, and it was worth including because it shows that sometimes when you're finding the greatest common factor, one of the numbers that you start with can actually end up being your GCF. Okay, next one. What is the GCF, or the greatest common factor, of 8 and 24? Okay, we're going to make factor trees. 8 is the same thing as, right, it's an even number, which means we can write it as 2 times what? That's right, 4. And 4 can be written, since it's an even number, as 2 times 2. And we know that 2, 2, and 2 are all prime numbers, so we don't have to go any further. Do you remember what the other type of number is called if it's not prime it starts with the C. Composite. Right? The composite number would be 4. We're not worried about that 4. Only the prime numbers. Right? What about if we write the factor tree for 24? Well, 24 is even, and so that's 2 times 12, right? 2 times 12 is 24. And then we did a factor tree for 12 a second ago, right? It was even, so this is 2 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12. And then we can break the 6 apart into 2 times 3, right? Our composite numbers are the 12 and the 6. And our prime numbers are the 2, the 2, the 2, and the 3. So I'm going to rewrite both of these, 8 and 24, as their primes. So 2 times 2 times 2, because we have a 2 here, a 2 here, and a 2 here. And for 24, right, if this was 8, right, then 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, right, because we had a 2, a 2, a 2, and a 3. 
So I'm just rewriting 8 and 24 as the product of their prime numbers. And now I'm going to start finding numbers that pair together. So I've got a 2 here that pairs with this 2 here. And I'm kind of doing things a little bit dif differently now because there's duplicates. You know what? Maybe I don't have to do them differently. Maybe I do this one in red, right? This one pairs in red, right? Maybe we go, okay, well, this one pairs in purple, right? This one pairs in blue. And then there's no three over here. So what we have to do now is we take the red, the purple, and the blue, and we multiply those together, right? The red, purple, and blue for only one of the numbers, not both, just one. So 2 times 2 times 2. That's what the GCF is. The GCF is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is equal to 8, right? And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. The biggest number that is able to divide 8 and 24 is 8, right? Because 8 divided by 8 is 1, and 24 divided by 8 is, let's put it a different way, 8 times what is 24? 8, 16, 24, so 3. So that means that the GCF of 8 and 24 is 8, All right? All right. I think this is the last one. Nope, we got one more after this. So what is the GCF of 5 and 7? Right? So we have 5 and 7. Right? Well, 5, we saw previously, was a prime number. And 7 is also a prime number, which means that we have a no factor tree for either one of them. But what does that actually mean? What does it mean when there's no factor tree? Well, let's break our rule that says don't make a factor tree if it's prime, okay? This is 1 times 5, and this is 1 times 7. So what is the one thing that they have in common? They have a 1 in common. So if you build a factor tree and you see that there are no numbers in common, there's always one number that's in common, and that number is 1. So that means that the GCF of 5 and 7 is 1. All right, last one. It says find the GCF of 9 and 20. I'm going to break 9 apart into its factor tree. This is an odd number, so I'm going to divide 9 by 3, right? 3 times what gives us 9? That's right, 3. Right, 20 is an even number, so it breaks up into 2 times some other number. Right, 2 times 10. Right, and 10 breaks up into, it's also an even number, 2 times, that's right, 5. And now we have all prime numbers. We have 3 times 3 for 9, and we have 2 times 2 times 5 for the 20, right? The composite number here being 10, we're not worried about that. We're just worried about the prime numbers, right? Do they share any number in common? No. There's no 3 to pair with over here, and there's no 2s to pair with over here, and there's no 5s to pair with over here, so there's nothing to pair with. If there's nothing to pair with, we say that the GCF, just like the previous problem, is 1, right? The greatest common factor of 9 and 20 is 1. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm going to post it online, and the next video that I will make is going to be on least common multiple.